We welcome you to our Bible study today of the Apostolic Doctrine of Eschatology. Today's lesson is The Return of Jesus, Part 1. A great problem within the churches today, especially apostolic churches, is that they are proclaiming a half-truth faith in a world filled with competing religious and secular ideologies. Our critics say that we differ from traditional Christian beliefs and are therefore labeled as heretics. According to Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, 10th edition, a heretic is a dissenter from established church dogma. These critics do not mention nor can they afford to admit that there is a world of difference between established church dogma and the biblical truth of the scriptures. Are we heretics as far as established church dogma is concerned? Yes, we are. However, we are not heretics regarding Christian beliefs as revealed to us in scripture. We are not followers of the traditions of men which make the word of God of no effect. You will never trust God more than when you trust his word. As followers of the Lord Jesus, it is our duty to continue to study God's Word and to seek a greater understanding of what He has revealed to us. Sometimes we have to change our minds about things. But if we are committed to the search for truth, we have to be willing to review our beliefs. The majority of people today who believe in Jesus view the Second Coming the resurrection, and the judgment of God as events that are in the future because the biblical account is full of seemingly literal descriptions that we are linked to these events. The most common error in understanding scriptures is allowing inconsistencies to exist. Such errors clearly reveal the lack of biblical study and understanding. The aim is often in support of tradition over scripture, thereby allowing the misinterpretation of a verse to contradict other verses. Hermeneutics is the science of interpretation, the common sense science of interpretation, and the basic rule of hermeneutics is the analogy of faith that says no scripture can negate any other scripture. Scripture never contradicts scripture. Honoring the context of the scriptures to the original readers is critical to proper biblical interpretation. Almost right is always wrong. To support the idea of a future second coming of Jesus when neither Jesus nor the apostles spoke of it, nor is it found in the scriptures, is to promote error. There are many people today that hold to this idea because of a lifetime of doctrinal conditioning and not because of doctrines derived from personal Bible study. This is a classic case of man-made tradition nullifying God's Word and making it have no effect in our lives. We are to be governed by Scripture, which is the inspired Word of Truth. Remember, when there is confusion, it is because traditions seek to alter the original meaning of Scripture. A Bible that can mean anything is a Bible that has no meaning. The Scriptures prove that these three events, the second coming, the resurrection, and the judgment, were all confined to the first century. The prophetic and figurative descriptions of these events are spiritual in nature. We can readily prove this by comparing Scripture with Scripture. For example, 
Matthew 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The scripture said the Son of Man was coming in the clouds of glory. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, the Bible said this, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, the scripture said this, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. If the nature of these events is literal, then the time of their fulfillment is obviously in the future. But what do the scriptures say? In Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, the scripture said this, And that, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Audience relevance tells us that now was a time present in the first century. The day of the return of the Lord was at hand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 and 31, the Bible said this, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. The time was short, and the fashion of the world was passing away in the first century. Notice what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Did you catch what that scripture said? They were written for our admonition, first century Christians, their admonition, upon whom the ends of the world present time, 2,000 years ago, are come. Notice what Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5 said. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. The return of the Lord was at hand, present tense, 2,000 years ago. And in James chapter 5 verses 8 and 9, the Bible said this, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. The return of Jesus was there, was nigh, present tense, 2,000 years ago. And in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible said this, But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Everything that pertained to God's old covenant relationship with the twelve tribes of Israel was getting ready to come to an end. The only end the Bible ever spoke about was the end of the old covenant relationship that God had with the nation of Israel. John said in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist should come, even now are there many 
Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. The last time that John was speaking of was the last hour. And he said, even now there are many Antichrist. Not the coming of one person at the end of an unknown future, but they were, ex they were there, they existed 2,000 years ago. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, the scripture said this, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? How many times have we heard the preachers express to us that judgment must begin at the house of God, but they never mention those first few words of that scripture, the time is come, present tense, 2,000 years ago, that time came, and the judgment of God began at the house of God. How many houses of God were there in the first century? Only one. It was the temple that was located in the city of Jerusalem. Now notice in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. How many times have we heard that expression, I'll do this or I'll do that if the Lord tarries? Well, God never did tarry. He did exactly what He said He was going to do, and He did it when He said He was going to do it. The apparent failure of these prophecies to come true has led to skepticism about the reliability of the Bible and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Past fulfillment solves this problem by maintaining that these prophecies were in fact fulfilled and they, they have a first century fulfillment. That paramount faith is the faith that is founded upon Scripture, no matter who or what condition or circumstance. Past fulfillment solves that problem. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. Now Jesus said this to the Pharisees, the most religious sect of people in that day. They erred because they didn't know the Scriptures. A problem with most church people today they never read their Bible. They never check to see if their leader is telling them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5, the Bible said this, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. The Word of God is true and is faithful. God Himself said, Let God be true and every man a liar. This concludes our Bible study today, Return of Jesus, Part 1. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.